This prophecy is how they enslave us! It's not a prophecy. It's a story. Holy mother. So this week we've pretty much seen exactly why modern Hollywood is struggling so much. From the disastrous Oscars to flubs and flops and even to blockbusters, it seems that nothing is ever good enough. And it was only a matter of time before the woke brigade came after Dune. But what exactly is their problem with Dune? And what are fans saying about it? Join me dear viewer as I dive back into the world of Dune and unravel its many secrets. So I was perusing the interwebs looking for ideas for this video when this gem of an article popped up. Dune Part 2, the white savior sequel manages to be even less diverse than the novel. Just from the title alone, I could tell that the writer, if you can even call her that, Cindy Steinberg, had never read any of the Dune books. Steinberg describes herself as, quote, a neurodivergent writer, intersectional advocate and DEI director who's chronicling this weird world of ours and making straight white men uncomfortable. <laughs> You serious? You know, if I didn't know any better, this bitch probably couldn't get a job if her life depended on it. I knew it was only a matter of time before woke morons like Steinberg would go after Dune. But I'm going to take a few minutes to shut this shit down because it's these kinds of dumbass articles that are ruining what we love most about storytelling and cinema. First, let's dispel with the fact that Paul Atreides is not a savior. The main point of the story is to have us question whether he is or isn't. Denis Villeneuve purposely shows us that the idea of Paul being a messiah was created by the Bene Gesserit as a way to control people. He could be the messiah or he could just be another guy. I'm not the one, Trinity. The Oracle hit me with that too. No, you have to be. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm just another guy. The idea is complex, so Paul Atreides could be the one, but he could just as easily be another guy. The idea is complex because life, faith, and the world are complex. I guess the concept is just too complex for Steinberg to comprehend. When she says the film pushes a narrative of a white man being the only hope for the Fremen in Arrakis, she's simply demonstrating that she's never seen the movie, never mind having read the book. As the audience, we're presented Paul Atreides, who some people call the Messiah or Al-Muadib, but we're constantly given reasons to question this. Actually, now that I think about it, the changes to Chani's character from the book help flesh this idea out more. In the book, Chani goes along with it because she's in love with Paul, but in the movie, she's more of a skeptic, which actually provides a counterbalance to the intense faith and belief of Javier Bardem's Stilgar. So for Steinberg to come out and say that this film is pushing some white savior narrative or brown people being hopeless is the epitome of stupidity and ignorance. She clearly doesn't get the main point of the book or the movie, probably because she's never seen it or read it. Second, Dune fixed a major problem in Hollywood. Instead of focusing on diversity box checking, it focused on delivering a quality story with excellent character development. The film actually had a very diverse cast, but it wasn't flaunting it in some virtue signaling way. It was just there. They simply made a good movie that happened to have diverse characters in it. This should be the goal of Hollywood. For Steinberg to come out and say that this movie is all about a white savior completely misses the point of Chani's presence in the film. Her presence inadvertently showed that balance and equality that the wokesters rave on about all the time. I'm not really sure how anyone could attack this movie from a diversity viewpoint when the film is exactly what you're fighting for. Not to mention the fact that Dune didn't use race or diversity to market the film at all, unlike a lot of other movies lately. Take a look at Madame Web, for example. That was a movie that touted how diverse it was and look at what happened. It focused on the girl boss narrative instead of a good story and it flopped massively. 
At the end of the day, diversity and inclusion doesn't measure how good a film is. It is always all about two things at minimum, story and character development. If you don't have at least one of those things, your movie is going to suck. And my third and final point is the fact that these so-called journalists have to have everything spelled out for them, leaving no room for nuance. Films that make you think, films that leave you wondering, those are the films that stay with you. Movies like Seven, The Usual Suspects, and Old Boy all leave audiences thinking hard at the end. Who is the real hero? Were they justified? And deeper questions about faith and one's own humanity. All of these things make great cinema that lasts and endures the test of time. Doom Parts 1 and 2 are a big complex movie. The films require you to actually focus on the movie and read into it to understand what the storyteller is trying to express. This is why Dune resonated with so many audiences. In a world of YouTube shorts, TikTok, and attention span destroying social media content, it was a breath of fresh air to be able to sit down and focus intently on one thing for nearly three hours. When I sat in the theater watching Dune Part 2, I found myself completely enthralled in the film. But I also noticed that no one made any noise, moved, got up, nothing. Everyone was also intently focused on the film. This is a rarity, especially in a New York City theater of all places. This is what makes good cinema. Denis Villeneuve respected his audience by not lecturing or berating them. There was no making the audience feel guilty because it's the guilt tripping and lecturing that destroyed modern Hollywood. No one goes to the movie theater to be lectured or berated. That's why people paid attention. Audiences want to have their own interpretation. They want to read into the characters and they want to read into the story. If everything lacks nuance and is simply surface level, then you just end up with something like the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. What made the sequel trilogy of Star Wars completely lack meaning was that everything was surface level. Yes, you did have a female protagonist, but without the necessary exposition, which is what made the character bland and why audiences couldn't resonate with her. The character was bland. There was no character arc or character development of any kind, so there was nothing to read into. Because these movies lacked this depth, it's really no surprise they ended up sucking as much as they did. It's failed writers such as Cindy Steinberg that show how far the mainstream media has fallen. In her article, she showed her surreal ignorance of the Dune franchise. She tried to find racial controversy and sow division where there was none. She ended up showing her complete misunderstanding of what the story was trying to portray. And I think she completely missed the point because, well, she's just not that intelligent. Movies don't have to spell everything out for you to express a message or a theme. And if you can't see the theme for yourself, well, you're shit out of luck then. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think that Dune is just too complex for a race huckster like Steinberg? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.